Hello, I'm really happy to be joining you here today. Thanks for joining me here today for my talk. My name is Mitch Altman and I love helping people. Please look me up if you think I can help you in any way. Let me give you a short introduction about me before getting into the rest of my talk. I've done a bunch of things I think are kind of cool in, in my life, but I'm famous for being an inventor. And in particular, famous for inventing a very strange invention called TV Be Gone, which is a remote control on a keychain that turns off televisions in public places. And that's all it does. Uh, and oddly enough, this <laughs> project is how I've made a living uh, since 2004 and this project I, I love. But I've done other things that uh, I think are pretty cool in my life. In the 1980s, I worked at a small Silicon Valley startup where we created the first virtual reality systems. And I was an early pioneer of virtual reality with them. We uh, even coined the term virtual reality there. In the 1990s, I started my own Silicon Valley startup, which was successful. And I've been free to devote most of my time traveling the world, giving talks and workshops for free. Traveling the world, educating others, mentoring others, helping others, helping others create community in the form of hackerspaces, makerspaces, everywhere for everyone. These are really cool communities, and I've been to hundreds of them. They are physical places where people come together to do all sorts of way cool things. Music, art, science, tech, whatever, just lots of cool things, whatever the community is into. And uh, I love tech. I love tech. But for me, it's mostly an excuse for people to come together. A very fun and worthwhile excuse, but an excuse to live and learn and grow and teach and share together and to make all of our lives better together. These are all important parts of living my life, living a life I love. But I didn't start out loving my life. I had a very troubled childhood. I was beaten up and bullied every day in school, blaming myself. What did I know? I was a kid depressed through all of this. My parents were depressed and weren't much help. Everything seemed way hopeless as a kid for me. What saved me, truly saved me, was a handful of supportive teachers who cared, who gave support and encouragement at times when I really needed it. This enabled me to survive. And it was a long road, but it eventually uh, enabled me to learn to live a life I love living, to feel productive, to be of service, others. Education is important. Good teachers are really important. Not just for topics and skills we learn, which are important, but for kids' well-being and also for humanity's future. It'll be kids who will be solving some of the pretty serious problems facing us all, including attempting to convince the planet to continue to support us. And let me explain that because it's important. By creating technologies and industries to serve human needs and wants, you may have noticed that we've created some undesired side effects, such as pollution. Pollution which physically creates an, env an environment on Earth that all respected scientists agree is increasingly becoming unable to support us. Our atmosphere is becoming increasingly unable to support us and support other mammals and many other life forms. But if we can change our behaviors, there's still a chance, a good chance, that the planet may be able to continue to support us. That's way worth trying, yes? But education, that's what I want to talk about. One good teacher, one good teacher, changes almost everything in a kid's entire life. Kids who feel they've had just one good teacher in school have higher self-worth, feel more productive, earn more income, are more ethical, have less chance of committing crimes, have less chance of going to jail, have more positive impact on others. If a kid has more than one good teacher, it's even better. Education and teaching changes lives and changes the world. 
As important as the supportive teachers were in my life, I used to think it was really sad that out of 20 years of school and university, I only had a handful of really good supportive teachers. But the sad truth is that 40% of people on our planet feel that they had none. Not even one good teacher in all the years they went to school. Technology also has a huge impact on all of our lives. Both good impact, such as creating time-saving devices, creating devices for making music, art, entertainment, fun, solving problems, connecting people so we can share knowledge and experience. But also some bad impact, such as screens in all of our lives, consuming perhaps too much of our time and energy, resulting in addictive behaviors, for instance with social media and games, causing feelings of isolation and alienation, and also causing outrage and polarization of society as, we see, as we've seen on social media in recent times. Since most tech is created by corporations primarily for political, military, and financial gain without regard for other consequences, this causes huge problems for all of us. Pollution, as I've already stated, global warming, wars, nuclear threat, powerfully manipulative media, such as social media. And this isn't fair to kids, but this is why we adults are relying on the children of today to try to, among other things, convince the planet to continue to support mammals of which we're one. Let's use tech to make our lives better, not worse. How do we do that? Well, that's not necessarily easy, especially given that tech gets ever more powerful over time since it's based on all the powerful tech before it, resulting in using the new powerful tech, causing more unintended consequences, and we create and use new, even more powerful tech to try to solve problems created by the tech before it, which was created by tech to solve the problems before the tech before it. How do we break this vicious cycle? Well. Again, that's not easy necessarily, but surely the key is education. But education today, you may have noticed, is mostly kids sitting in rows and columns, reacting to bells every 52 minutes, absorbing information from an authority figure in the front and parroting back that information on tests. Tests in schools are supposed to be evaluating learning. Unfortunately, the schools have become places that focus on the tests and not the learning. They become places that mostly train kids on how to take tests. The goal of going to school has become doing better on tests than other kids. It's about competition against one another and not learning. Real education is about each kid learning what they need to learn to live the lives they want to live, each learning how to create better lives for themselves and for those around them. This is what real education is about, and it's fun and enjoyable and effective. Tech, as a powerful force in our lives, must be part of real education. Let's put tech in this context to make good use of it, to make great use of it. When teaching tech, we can show that it is a big part of the whole of our lives, that it is not separate from our lives. When teaching tech, we can teach its power. We can explore our responsibility we each have, both for the tech we use in our lives and the tech we create. While teaching tech, we can be providing real education to kids. While teaching tech, we can also be teaching everyone how to explore making one's life way worthwhile, how to explore making one's life way meaningful, how to explore making one's life enjoyable. While teaching tech, we can also be teaching everyone how enjoyable and powerful it is to live a lifetime of learning, learning tech and learning everything, teaching how fun and worthwhile and better it is to cooperate with each other, to solve our problems together. Big problems, small problems, personal problems, societal problems, worldwide problems. We can do so much on our own 
and we can do so much more together. We evolved as a species to work and play together, to support each other, to su survive in a sometimes hostile environment. We can still work and play together to make each of our lives better. We can still work and play together to make all of our lives better. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about here with a couple of examples. A few weeks ago, I was invited to help organize and facilitate for UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, Kids Hack the Crisis Hackathon. It was really cool. Kid groups of kids who didn't even know each other from all over the world on Zoom worked and played together to brainstorm problems facing kids in the pandemic. Each group chose a problem to actually solve, brainstorm about the solution, and then present their solution. One group chose education. Their solution, which was high tech, was to make use of old and unused smartphones to create very inexpensive virtual reality machines to distribute to schools, which would distribute to kids at home for learning at home during the pandemic. With their program, kids could learn, for example, art and engineering from Leonardo da Vinci or math and physics from Albert Einstein. The group I facilitated chose to focus on domestic violence. And these are 10 to 13 year old kids. They weren't shying away from difficult problems here. They chose domestic violence. Um, their solution, which was low tech, was to make use of hotels, which are underutilized in the pandemic, as shelters for kids affected by domestic violence. Every group of kids came up with their own creative solutions to very difficult problems facing kids in the pandemic. This hackathon was very useful and very productive. And for those participating, very enjoyable. So enjoyable that at the end of the hackathon, after an entire weekend, hours each day, all the kids stayed online past the end time, not wanting it to end. They wanted to stay with this energy that they created. And this was just one weekend of kids coming together. Imagine if this is what school was like. The workshops I've devoted my time giving make it fun for people of all ages to learn electronics, even for people who've never even thought about electronics, because learning is fun. The first time I met her at one of my workshops, a young teenage girl made a simple blinky light kit. She soldered it together and it blinked a light. And she really loved it. She totally loved it. This is the first time she ever did anything like this, and she totally loved it. I met her again a year later at another workshop, and she spent the entire weekend making every kit that I had available. She was way into it, and of course, I encouraged her. And um, she was way into it. I met her again several years later, and she was out of college, and she was making a living designing electronics in Silicon Valley. This is how one supportive teacher can make a difference. One supportive teacher at the right moment in a kid's life can inspire them, for instance, to go on making a living doing what they love. It makes me super grateful and happy that I've been able to play this role for lots of kids and just by doing what I love, which is teaching. And whether or not people play with electronics ever again after taking a workshop, it's not really important. What's important is that they gain confidence and a sense of accomplishment by making something they didn't even necessarily know they were capable of doing. And the kids carry this sense of accomplishment and confidence with them their entire lives, better enabling them to do whatever they do in their future. This is a huge part of what education can and should include. Imagine if this is what schools were like. What we teach kids today becomes the future. What we teach kids today becomes, of course, their future. But what we teach kids today becomes our future. Let's create a better world for everyone by providing real education to kids. Let's create a better world for everyone by teaching kids what they need to learn to live the lives they want to live. Let's create a better world for everyone by teaching kids to continually explore and find ways of making their lives better and the lives of those around them better. 
If we can do this, and I know we can, we create a better world for us here now and far into the future. Thank you for your time.